Welcome back to the Wannan Sport and Volunteer Awards. We've done our sporting volunteers and now we're up to doing our community volunteers. These are great awards. They're the most favourite event that I have on the calendar in Wannan because we recognise quite remarkable people who give so much so that we can live, I think, in the best communities in Australia. So to all those being recognised today, um, my absolute congratulations and heartfelt thanks for everything that you do. Um, when it comes to the community awards, we have several categories. So let's begin with our first category, which is the Young Volunteer Award. And our first recipient here is Jeff Collins. Congratulations, Jeff. Jeff was awarded the best junior club person at Warnable Wolves this year for his outstanding commitment to the club and soccer. Jeff is an integral part of the under-16 team and he displays the type of volunteer commitment that all sports clubs dream about. He assists with the Mini Roos age 4 to 10 and has acted as an assistant coach at the training with the under-12 teams and stepped up to referee his first game after completing the Laws of the Game course. Jeff is a vital part of the junior programs and is a great role model for all of the kids to look up to. Congratulations to Jeff and it's wonderful to see you taking up volunteering at such a young age. It's wonderful to see your dedication and commitment to soccer as well. Young volunteering will give people great skills and Jeff is showing that. And Jeff, I wish you all the best for your future volunteering and good luck for the next soccer season ahead. And here is your award and thank you again for everything that you're doing. Our next recipient in the Community Volunteer Awards is the Emergency Management Award. And our winner this year is the Port Ferry SES. The Port Ferry SES unit have been providing support to the local community and beyond for over 40 years. The members have been nominated for their selfless and ongoing commitment to the safety and well-being of the Port Ferry community. The unit currently has 22 volunteers who provide 24-hour year-round support to their community for flood and storm emergencies, road accidents, search and rescue response and assistance to other agencies such as fire police and ambulance. In the past 12 months, Port Ferry SES volunteers have responded to 140 requests for assistance. In early October 2020, they responded to over 60 requests for assistance in one week due to a significant flood event. Many activities were protracted, requiring ongoing monitoring or management. The unit coordinated response to this event with the assistance of volunteers from other neighbouring and regional SES units. While major storm and flood events and road rescue responses highlight the role SES volunteers play, there are many more hours invested in training, administration and community education. Time spent in these areas help to ensure our volunteers and our communities are better prepared when storm and flood emergencies occur. During COVID-19 restrictions, the unit has maintained contact with the community through social media and a monthly radio segment broadcast through ABC Western Victoria. I congratulate Port Ferry SES unit on their strong sense of duty and commitment to responding to emergencies in the community. And thank you for your ongoing commitment and service to our local area. And I have a award here for you all to the Port Ferry SES. Well done. Our next recipient in the Emergency Management Award category is the Portland SES. 
Portland SES unit is fortunate to have many de dedicated volunteers who support their community during flood and storm emergencies, road accidents and search and rescue response and also provide assistance to other agencies such as fire, police and ambulance. Three of the volunteers in the Portland SES in particular have provided exceptional service to their community and leadership to fellow volunteers for over 40 years now, achieving a combined service of over 125 years as volunteers of the SES in Victoria. Congratulations to the Portland SES unit for everything that you have done over the years and in particular in recent years. And I acknowledge the assistance that you have rendered at times of need, which epitomises what volunteering is all, all about. Across Wannan, we are grateful for the role that our SES volunteers play and continue to play uh, in a time of need. And we've seen from both Port Ferry and from Portland SES, in particular, that dedication to volunteering this year. I would also like to especially recognise three individuals from the Portland SES Club who have shown exceptional volunteering over the last 40 to 45 years. Gary Hine, who has been a volunteer for over 45 years, and Ray Pulaski and Charlie De Bono, who have both had given service for over 40 years. All have held many roles within the unit our skilled rescue operators continue to be leaders and mentors for other unit members and are all recipients of the Victorian SES Life Membership Award while still all active volunteers with the Portland SES. The trio have also represented Portland SES and Vic SES at road crash rescue competitions at regional, national and international events and continue to share their skill and knowledge with other volunteers in the Portland and surrounding area. Gary joined Portland SES in 1976 and is the only founding member still active in the unit. He has had significant influence over the years on shaping volunteerism in the Portland SES. I'm told that Gary has attained too many competencies to mention and has been involved in many significant road and cliff, cliff rescues over his 45 year service. With a keen interest in boating, Gary was also instrumental in assisting with the establishment of the Portland Flotilla Coast Guard, BF-17, after the unit ceased marine rescue response in 2004. His passion and commitment are an inspiration to other members as he is still one of the most active responders and attends training each week. Congratulations, Gary, and thank you. Ray joined in 1981. His enthusiasm and leadership were recognised early and he was appointed unit controller in 1989, a position he held for over 23 years. He, was in, he has invested many hours improving all aspects of the unit, being instrumental in relocation to the current headquarters in 1985, developing administrative and management procedures before any were available within the organisation, and instilling a culture of pride in preparation, performance and presentation that has become part of Portland SES DNA. Ray's passion for road crash rescue saw the Portland SES unit become the first SES unit to compete in Australia and overseas in the 2000 road rescue challenges. A skilled operator and, tra and, and trainer across all competencies, Ray is currently the Deputy Controller Training and continues to share his knowledge to members new and old. Thank you, Ray. Charlie also joined the unit in 1981. He has held many positions within the unit, including being dual unit controller for both Portland and Haywood SES units. He shares a passion for road rescue with Ray and Gary. 
with his technical knowledge as a rescue operator held in high regard by his peers. Charlie's skill and commitment have seen him compete at many rescue challenges, representing Portland, Victoria and Australia interstate and abroad in Scotland and New Zealand. Charlie remains an active member in the unit. His community service extends beyond Victoria, travelling to Western Australia to support the communities impacted by cyclones in April this year. Congratulations, Charlie, and congratulations to all three members who have provided exceptional service to their community over a long period of time and continue to be active volunteers, inspiring, mentoring and educating those around them. You three, as individuals, are an inspiration to our community. And while this award is for the Portland SES, you also individually will be recognised with awards for taking your volunteerism, volunteerism beyond the call of duty. Thank you. Our next category in the Volunteer Community Awards is the Group Volunteer Award. And our first recipient here are the Camperdown Horse Trials. The volunteers for the Camperdown Horse Trial are to be commended for their dedication to hosting an event during the COVID-19 pandemic. The small group of volunteers organised the event with the additional requirements of COVID-19 safety plans and risk management to satisfy the Victorian Department of Health and Human Services. Equestrian Victoria, and the Karangamite Shire. This increased the workload for the volunteers significantly and meant that the competition had to be staggered over three days from the Friday night to the Sunday. The changing circumstances also meant that the volunteers had to innovate and they should be congratulated on trialling an electronic scoring system for the first time in Australia. So there you go, first time ever done was done in Camperdown uh, and that's a fantastic event by those remarkable volunteers. This group should be congratulated for their dedication to the event and their ability to host the event in such challenging times. Congratulations to the Camperdown Horse Trials and I have a certificate here for you uh, and can I say it's incredibly well deserved. The next recipients of our Group Volunteer Award are the Colac and District Family History Group. The success of the Colac and District Family History Group can be attributed to their strong volunteering culture and ethos of caring for and supporting each other while contributing to the benefit and for the benefit of the local Colac community. The Colac and District Family History Group understand the health and wellbeing benefits of volunteering. And the leadership team understands how important it is to still be able to do the things that are so important for the local community, even while we're in the midst of a pandemic. They provided remote access to resources, web-based communication and cloud storage which enabled volunteers to interact and work together. Internet access and IT equipment were provided where it was needed, and obviously COVID safe practices were established to deliver and collect non-digital work. I congratulate the Colac and District Family History Group Inc. on staying connected and continuing to support the community, and in fact, driving their volunteering through the COVID-19 pandemic so they could kill, continue to still be delivering for the community. So it's a fantastic effort what they've done given the circumstances that we've all confronted through COVID-19. So well done to the Colac and District Family History Group.
The next recipients of our Group Volunteer Awards is the Dad's Army Maintenance Crew of Portland. Uh, wasn't it a great show, Dad's Army? And great to see that it lives on in name even now. Volunteering is such an integral part of Australian life and nowhere is it more prevalent than at the Portland RSL Memorial Bowling Club. The Dad's Army group is made up of 10 much valued and loved volunteer members who meet every Monday morning at the club, donating over 2,000 hours of labour each year. Over 2,000 hours of labour each year. Ranging in age from their 60s through to their 80s and perhaps even above, they are incredibly active as they undertake gardening, green and club maintenance, all of which require a variety of skills. The men undertake incredibly important jobs, including regularly mowing and trimming edges around the greens, car parks and roadsides, maintaining the greens, including a regular Monday morning cleanup of bird droppings, watering and grooming the synthetic turf to keep the greens running beautifully. Keeping the machinery well maintained in good working condition, nurturing the beautiful gardens, weeding and trimming hedges, regularly painting outside structures such as shelters, seating and outdoor buildings, clearing any rubbish or debris from around the club and sweeping paths and driveways, maintaining the car parks as required to provide patrons safe parking and access to the club rooms and maintaining the equipment required for setting up for bowls competitions. The club welcomes and appreciates those special skills that create a win-win situation whereby the volunteers strengthen working relationships and friendships as well as the club benefiting from the thousands of volunteer hours. To the Portland Dad's Army, well done. You're a fantastic group of volunteers. You're great characters and it is with great, great delight I present you with this volunteering award. Well done to all of you. Our next recipients in the group awards are the Hamilton Golf Club Beginners Group. And can I tell you what a fantastic, what a fantastic bunch of volunteers keep women's golf at the forefront of everything that the Hamilton Golf Club does. Pam King and Marg King, the coordinators of Hamilton Golf Club Beginners Group, are being acknowledged for their efforts in persisting and making sure the legacy carries on for a women's beginners program, which was established nearly 50 years ago by Ath Archer and Beth Francis, who have been previously recognised in these awards. In 1972, one of Hamilton's female members was asked by a friend if she could teach her how to play golf. And soon enough, there was a group of five or so female beginners. The lessons were such a success that the official introductory program began in 1974. Ath Archer and Beth Francis took the reins and relinquished their positions in 2018. Today the group has over 38 members and equal membership between men and women, which is a tribute to Pam and Mark. Every Tuesday from February to November, the Kings run a clinic for beginners or take them out on the course to play nine holes. The mood on course is very relaxed. There are no officials strictly upholding the rules, only men and women developing their passion for golf. We get, you, get such a thrill out of it. They get so excited when they hit a good shot or drop a putt, and that makes us very happy, Pam King said. It's very rewarding being out there with them. By the end of November, most are ready to progress to club competition. The bonds formed during the program and at their post-golf lunches fuel the desire for the players to keep going because golf is as much about the friendship on the course as it is as much about the friendship off the course. 
The initiatives have recently been recognised by Golf Australia through its even par strategy. As a keen golfer myself, par, Pam and Mark, I might try, have to come along because even though I don't consider myself a beginner, sometimes my golf resembles that of a beginner. Well done, what you do for my home golf club is quite extraordinary. Um, the program is a phenomenon. We now have young people also coming and learning how to play golf on a Sunday morning. Um, Hamilton Golf Club, I think, is demonstrating what volunteerism is all about, and you two in particular are to be commended. And I have a certificate here to recognise everything you're doing for golf in Hamilton. Thank you. Our next recipients in the Group Volunteer Award to the Port Ferry Cricket Club Curators. As Australians, we love to celebrate sporting success. Behind every athlete or team and sporting event is an amazing team of volunteers. Volunteers that make sport tick at every level. The Port Ferry Cricket Club Curators are some of those volunteers that work behind the scenes. And they are being recognised today for their service to the Port Ferry Cricket Club. The group of committed and motivated volunteers has turned a waste paddy filled with weeds and rocks into a superb cricket ground with a turf wicket that is second to none. They spend up to 30 hours per week on the grounds and have done so for between 10 and 25 years. Players from Melbourne teams have commented that the wicket is as good as, if not better than, wickets in the Premier League. The group is comprised of Bob Dwyer, Paul Sheehan, Jeff Coxall and Damien Gleeson. Congratulations to this group of dedicated volunteers. In my younger days, it sounds like the type of wicket that I would have needed to bat on to be able to make runs every day. A lot goes into preparing a good wicket, and by the sounds of things, yours is as good as any you would find in the country. Well done, you deserve this. The next recipients as part of our Community Awards group segment is the Warrnambool Men's Shed. The Warrnambool Men's Shed has been recognised for their contribution towards mentoring students at St Pius's on a weekly basis. Students attending the Men's Shed are often experiencing disengagement from school or suffering social and emotional issues impacting their resilience. Through the volunteers at the Men's Shed, the students have become more engaged and improved their resilience, health and wellbeing. The men, by sharing their life experiences, advice and general chatter, have developed positive relationships with the students, helping them to develop respect, empathy and improve their ability to self-regulate. In return, the students have a positive space to learn, socialise and learn about the tangible notions of community service. The students are developing their emotional and cognitive skills and are being recognised for their own skills, talent and accomplishments. The students also learn about respectful relationships in the supportive presence of older men. This partnership is a wonderful example of an intergenerational mentoring program. Develop lots of skills and um, in the shed like you don't go up and be like rude to the men because they're volunteers. They're, get, they're coming to the shed instead of doing something in their own time. One of my favourite moments was the first time going there. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to go there in year four. So the first time I got there I was a bit nervous, but all the men were really nice to me. And then when I went there the next week, like, kept on getting a better connection. Yeah, so if, you, if like, I'm having a rough day, on the Wednesdays mornings and then hits 10 o'clock, I don't feel like going to the shed. But then when I go to the shed, I like, 
the men cheer you up and stuff, they have funny jokes. Congratulations to the Warrnambool Men's Shed and the time and effort you give to these students is greatly appreciated by the students, by the school and by our community. The school tells me that they are so grateful to this wonderful group of people who volunteer their time every week and give so much of themselves to our students. To the Warrnambool Men's Shed, this award is so, so well deserved. And in particular, during COVID-19, where the loss of many hours at school has impacted on students, what you have done through your mentoring program, through the friendships that you've developed with the students at St Pius's, is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Our community is the better for it. And for me and the community, Thank you for what you are doing and continue to do. Our next recipients in the group category of our volunteer awards are the Warrnambool Theatre Company and Holiday Actors Group. A decades long history of not working together was overcome when the Warrnambool Theatre Company and Holiday Actors Committees recognise the opportunity to strengthen performing arts, community and connection through collaboration in Warrnambool. This groundbreaking partnership led to an acclaimed sellout season of Les Mis in 2019, a suite of Theatre Skills Masterclasses in 2021, $110,000 funding to extend the theatre building and storage facility, shared skills and a blockbuster production of Cats in 2022. This collaboration resulted in financial stability thanks to joint production revenue, a secured theatre building and storage facility, a community theatre pipeline that connects to all ages, genders, cultures and abilities to create performance and skill building opportunities right throughout the area. Elise Goddard Clegg, the President Lyle Russell, the Treasurer, spearheaded this partnership, which is proof that brave leadership, collaboration and volunteer commitment can deliver outstanding achievements for the community. The ongoing collaboration between the two companies continue to strengthen the creative expression in Warrnambool and the surrounding area. I would like to congratulate Warrnambool Theatre Company and Holiday Actors Group for their passion for the arts and for theatre. Shows like Les Mis or Cats or any other production don't just happen. Behind every production is a team of dedicated volunteers. Wannan has a vibrant creative industry and it's thanks to volunteers like those found at the Warrnambool Theatre Company and the Holiday Actors Groups that make sure that we continue to be an area where the arts thrive. This award is very, very well deserved and congratulations to all those who put their interests aside, joined together and made sure that the arts continue in our local communities. Our next category in our Community Volunteers Awards is the individual category. And the first person we're recognising here is Chantelle Butcher. Chantelle has been a wonderful contributor to the Hamilton Basketball Association program over many years and is now volunteering her time as a coach and manager. In 2021, she coached three teams for the school in the local Hamilton Basketball Association. This contribution to the school's large basketball program ensures that more teams can be entered uh, as without volunteer coaches, it would not be possible. Chantelle is an enthusiastic and passionate basketball coach for both junior and senior teams and, can, and is developing and continues to develop strong relationships with her players in both a fun but learning environment. Congratulations, Chantelle, and I wish your teams great success for the 2022 season. You thoroughly deserve this award 
and I know that your teams will continue to see success into the future because of the passion and commitment that you have, not only for coaching, but also for making sure that basketball remains fun to play. Well done. Our next recipient in the individual awards category is Les Donald from Warrnambool. Les is a member of the Warrnambool Men's Shed and he's been recognised for his leadership role in implementing the mentoring program with senior students at the St Pius Parish School. Whilst all members of the Warrnambool Men's Shed deserve acknowledgement for participating in this program, Les deserves individual recognition for his proactive role in supporting students. During, during ongoing lockdowns in Victoria, Les has continued to work with students by working from home and planning activities for them. Les genuinely cares about the students and he gives his heart and soul to support them. He's very nice. He um doesn't he said you're allowed to go up to the shed on like weekends after school some nights because someone will always be there. Like, you know, cares about us, makes all this stuff and then we put it together. So yeah. I'll say like, um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come up and build all this cool stuff. The students have learned so many building skills and recognised that they have talents that they would not have identified in the ordinary mainstream classroom. It has greatly boosted their self-esteem and engagement with the school. Some students have said that the one thing that gets them through the week is going to the men's shed. It's their happy place and they eagerly look forward to just spending time with the members at the shed. Congratulations to Les on the fabulous work he has undertaken on behalf of the students and the men's shed in making sure this program is the success that it is. You deserve this, Les. Our next recipient in the individual category is Shirley Bramley from The Wannon. Shirley has been nominated for her dedication to the Wannan and Nigretta community. Shirley is a tenacious advocate for these two communities. Her tireless work includes environmental issues such as tree and weed removal, vermin control and fire and road safety issues in the Wannan Falls Reserve and surrounding areas. Shirley is also passionate about the local Wannan history and has organised for the funding and installation of information signage at the Old Wannan Bridge and the original Wannan Primary School. She spent hours researching the history of these sites, contacting past school students and teachers, visiting the local history society and searching the internet. She has also completed several scrapbooks containing these histories as well as framed photos and stories which are displayed in the Wannan Community Room at the Wannan CFA station. Shirley has a great knowledge of the local history and is doing a wonderful job of sharing and preserving it for the future. She is a valuable and highly respected community member. Shirley, congratulations on everything that you do for the community. And it is wonderful that future generations will be able to look back on the history of the Wannan and Nigretta communities. Thank you for everything you have done, your work in making sure history is preserved. It's a great pleasure to give you this award. Our next recipient in the individual category is Robert Bevan. The Warrnambool Wolves soccer program wouldn't be the success story that it is without the time, dedication and support provided by Rob. Rob volunteers his time across the club from being a committee member to coordinating the mini ruse and the masters. Rob has also 
undertaken a laws of the game course and on match day often steps up as an assistant referee and refereeing both junior and senior SWVFA league fixtures. Not content with being involved in the game from a refereeing perspective, he is also a club photographer and has captured some brilliant, brilliant images. I look forward to seeing the continued success of the Warrnambool Wolves and I believe the club is in great hands with not only Rob but also his wife Anita volunteering and his daughters Katie and Pippa also doing and playing their part. It's a truly family affair and Rob you deserve this for everything that you're doing for the Warrnambool Wolves. Keep it up and congratulations. Our next individual category winner is Maureen Noonan from Terang. Maureen travels all over Victoria as a volunteer in the Lions 5 District Skin Check and Awareness Van. To be part of this team, Maureen has undertaken extensive training as a dermoscopist. Maureen has natural compassion and, support and a supportive personality which she uses to assist many members of the Lions Club and others who have been or are in need. Outside of volunteering for the Lions, Maureen is also a familiar face volunteering at assorted community events around Tarang and the Tarang district. Maureen's time and dedication to volunteering is remarkable as she also cares for a handicapped daughter and a special needs sister which is also on top of her work as a nurse at Southwest Healthcare. I congratulate Maureen for her dedication to volunteering and especially in the healthcare fields. Through your proactive volunteering, Maureen, you're saving lives. And I thank you on behalf of the community for everything that you do. Like everyone who has been recognised today, you deserve this recognition and thank you for all that you're doing. We now move on to the Member of Parliament Award as part of our Sport and Community Awards. And the first recipient of the Member of Parliament Award goes to Pat Varley of Warrnambool. Pat has served as a committee member of the Friends of the Warrnambool Botanic Garden for three decades, much of that time as president, and was awarded life membership in 2009. She has driven many significant projects, projects including the refurbishment of the historic cannon, the restoration of the well, the new toilet block, and the nature-based playground. An active member of the guiding team, Pat especially loves school groups and is a passionate believer in using the Warrnambool Botanic Garden in educating people about the environment. Her intelligent and reasoned approach to all matters has meant that she is an effective campaigner, respected by those she seeks to influence. And I have been on the receiving end of some very, very welcome and great guidance by Pat. Pat's contribution to her community in general has been significant during a distinguished career in education and in volunteering throughout her retirement. She recently stood down as president of the Friends of the Warrnambool Botanic Garden, but continues to serve on the committee, an inspirational role model to newer, younger men and members. Congratulations, Pat. I've always found it an absolute pleasure and a delight to work with you. You are always absolutely delighted to be contributing to the local community and to the Botanic Gardens. Your friendly smile, your welcoming and warmth uh, is always greatly appreciated and it is with great delight that I present you this award. And as is my want for these Member of Parliament recipients, uh, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. What makes the Warrnambool Botanic Gardens so special? Well, this 
just the beauty of the gardens themselves um, and their history, I think. Because they've been here now for, on this site, 153 years, we've got some magnificent trees. It takes a long while to develop big trees. And so we have these ones, like the one behind me, that are over 100 years old. Um, and they're a Guilfoyle garden. And in my view, Guilfoyle was the greatest landscape gardener of all time. He used a vegetation like an artist used as paint. And so to get his colours, he planted different trees, used different foliage. and. Um, Melbourne Botanic Gardens, of course, was his uh, best known one, but he also did lots of gardens around the Western District, including Hamilton. Um, and so it's the beauty of the gardens and the fact that they're such a lovely place to visit and beautifully maintained by our curator, I might say. And also, what has been the most favourite thing that you've found about volunteering? What is it about volunteering that you found so special? It's interesting, you know, sometimes I wouldn't even be aware it was volunteering because what I've done is follow my interests and that's given me the chance to do it with like-minded people. And because they're like-minded people, you make great friendships, you enjoy what you're doing and you see a sense of achievement at the end of it. It's really good. <laughs> As I say, it's, it's the fact that, well, you can pursue your interests and it keeps you in touch with the world. Um, in this area, of course, it keeps me in touch with the gardens and um, the things we've been able to do and the satisfaction of achieving something. So, very satisfying. James has a great passion for all the community groups that he volunteers for. When it comes to sport, he's volunteered for the Hamden Football Netball League and has been a board member since 2010. He's volunteered for the Cobden Football Netball Club. He's a life member and he was president from 1998 to 2006. For the Cobden Sports Club, where he volunteered for t from 2013 to 2015 and for Life Saving Victoria, where he's also a life member. He's also volunteered across Cobden community groups, including he was central to the Cobden Community Bank, an inaugural member and chairperson from 2006 to 2021, and for the Cobden Airport Committee between 1998 and 2008. Cobden Apex, Safety House, Cobden Rotary, are also recipient of James's volunteering time and efforts. James has also been recognised as the Rotary Paul Harris Fellow and Karangamite Citizen of the Year. This occurred in 2017. James is a community-minded volunteer who's passionate and generous about his contribution to his community. He has all the strengths that you need in a volunteer and James, thank you for your friendship and your guidance as a member of the Cobden community for every time that I've had the pleasure of interacting with you. Can I say that this recognition is thoroughly deserved and thank you for all that you've done and continue to do for the Cobden community. Now James, before I conclude, I've got a couple of questions for you be interested in hearing your views on how you think volunteering has changed over the years. How volunteering has changed over the years, very interesting. I remember being in Apex Australia, a member of Apex Australia back in the 80s and uh, we noticed a big change in people's attitudes towards uh, volunteering and how it had dropped off in the uh, 90s where it became, you know, it was a me society and all that sort of thing. But since the uh, 2000s, I've seen massive change in people giving more to their local communities and giving more to uh, programs and groups and all that sort of thing that make a difference in our, in it, within our local communities and even in the wider community. Um, and uh, I think that's absolutely fantastic. We're starting to change our attitudes towards that and 
it's always great to give you time when you have time to give to something that's going to make make you yourself a better person, but also the uh, the communities that you're working. And also, what is the greatest pleasure that you've derived from volunteering back to your local community because you've done a lot of it? Greatest pleasure. Uh, that, that is extremely difficult to pick out one. I really, I don't think I could, but if there was anything that uh, makes me feel really, really good is to, um, is the time that I've spent with, uh, in surf life saving with young people. When you see young people from ages of six up to about 12 at, at uh, what we call nippers, and when you uh, watch them in the water where they cannot, have no, no uh, sense of um, survival in water or can't swim, and by the end of the 12 week session we have with them is to watch those young people who have grown and be able to uh, look after themselves in, in water, uh, give themselves self survival skills, etc. etc. Is, is one of those things where I get a fair bit of, I get a big kick out of seeing that for young people who, who you know, have um, learned something that's going to help them throughout the rest of their lives when they're, when they're in, the, in the water environment. Absolutely fantastic um, things to see. Our next recipient of a parliamentary award, and our final recipient, is Joyce Roberts for Cobden. Well done, Cobden. You've got the daily double. And can I say, every time I go to Cobden, I see what volunteering is all about because it is a community which is built on volunteering. And Joyce, you epitomise that. Joyce has been treasurer for a cumulative 132 years for organisations in Cobden. The Cobden Recreation Reserve, where she was treasurer from 1987 to 2021. The Hatesbury Indoor Bias Bowls Association, 2008 to 2021. The Cobden Senior Citizen Centre, 2008 to 2021. The Cobden Progress Club, treasurer for six years. The Cobden Sports Club, 1987 through to 2019. The Cobden Recreation Reserve, 1987 to 2021. Just a small 34 years. Uh, incredible. The Cobden Recreation Reserve, an inaugural member since 1978. So this goes beyond her 132 years as a treasurer. She's a life member of the Cobden Sports Club Cobden Senior Citizen Centre Secretary for eight years. The Cobden Football Netball Club, part of the introduction team of netball into the league. Umpire, coach and team manager for netball clubs and associations across the Karangamite Shire. Part of the Cobden Spring Festival as an unsung hero at their 2018 festival and has also assisted with netball umpiring at festival events. And I'm sure there's probably more. Joyce, congratulations. You are a stalwart of the Cobden community. Everything you do when it comes to your volunteering is done with a smile on your face, is done selflessly, and is all about the community. So it's wonderful to be able to recognise you in this way. Thank you for all that you have done for the Cobden community. And I look forward to catching up again soon. But before I go, I've got a couple of questions that I'd like to ask you. What is it that you so love about volunteering? Keeps me busy because I can't sit down and do nothing. I need to be doing things uh, and it just passes my time and I need to do things and I enjoy doing it. And also, how many friendships have you been able to develop through volunteering? And how much does volunteering lend to that sense of connection that you can get from doing it? Too numerous to, to, num to mention, yes, yes, through all the different sports and everything. And you just meet up with so many people and you make so many friends and, and it's great. Well, that's it for another year of the Wannan 
Volunteer and Sports Awards. Can I thank everyone who has been a recipient of it today um, on behalf of the communities of Wannan. Your volunteering is extraordinary. Your volunteering has made our communities better places to live and our communities stronger. You are the fabric of our Wannan communities and everything that you do is greatly, greatly appreciated. I look forward to being able to host these awards in person next year. It's the best day for me of my year as a Member of Parliament because the individuals and groups that we're able to recognise through these awards just make you so, so humble. It is quite extraordinary what everyone does through and around our communities, for our communities. And can I say, it is a great pleasure to be able to recognise these silent, unsung heroes for everything that they do on our behalf. Until next year, goodbye and thanks. Authorised by Dan Tian, Liberal Party, Hamilton.